So it was, um, it was really excellent being out in Seattle for the last, I think, two weeks of the election campaign, the last big push um, to, one, get out the vote, but also to raise socialist ideas uh, as well. And I was taken aback at the amazing vote that we got, and it is absolutely historic. Um, and maybe there's doubt about that, about it being a historic result, because, you know, we didn't win in the way that, you know, the ruling class sees elections, but we did win. It's a massive victory for socialist ideas and for independent working class political action going forward. And I think it also reflects an entirely new situation for the socialist movement in the U.S. and for the possibilities of socialist alternative going forward. Um, and if there's any doubt at the historic nature of this election result for Shama Sawant and socialist alternative in Seattle, I'm going to point out a couple things. Uh, Frank Chop is uh, the most powerful legislator in Washington state politics, and that's who Shama was running against. In his 18-year career, this is the highest vote that anyone's ever gotten in running against him, right? That includes Republicans. Um, that includes, you know, Republicans, mainly. <laughs> uh, and no Republican has ever gotten as much of a vote as our candidate, Shama Sawant, got in taking on Frank Trump. Another thing in looking at the historic challenge that it was, um, and we shouldn't take, you know, uh, glee in this, but it's just a fact of the situation, is that all the candidates combined of all the socialist organizations that ran candidates for president, and there were too many of them, running candidates for president, if you took all their votes nationally, added up, and added them up throughout the whole country, it doesn't equal the vote that we got in this little district of two neighborhoods in Seattle, right? And that shows, um, that shows the impact that we made in Seattle, and it shows the impact that could have been made uh, across the country going forward. And I, I hope you're queuing up the video, because I got the video uh, in my lead off. Okay, so how is this result gotten? You know, it's not just a matter of getting lucky, although there was a bit of that, uh, and I'll get into that later. <coughs> but it reflects our analysis. You know, our analysis was that there was massive class anger, and there continues to be, if not more, massive class anger in U.S. society. This was reflected in Occupy in 2011, um, and it could have been reflected in 2012 if people from the Occupy movement, from the labor movement, from the socialist left, had run candidates throughout the country, then it could have been reflected in the elections. Instead, the discussion around the elections was overwhelmingly dominated by the 1%. It was dominated by their two candidates, by the debate between uh, the two-headed monster of corporate America in the political system, that being the Democrats and Republicans. So, from this analysis that there was a vacuum, an anti-establishment, uh, pro-working class vacuum, in 2012, that's on the basis that we ran Shama Sawant uh, for a legislature in Washington State as well. And actually, the result that she got shows that there was even more of a vacuum than we thought existed. Um, and that if this campaign, if, if other anti-corporate, independent working class campaigns have been run across the country, there are some things that are unique about Seattle, but the big picture is not unique to Seattle that working class people are angry, that people are angry at the two parties of big business, angry at the budget cuts that have come down, um, and wanting to look for an alternative to the capitalist system. So with that, I wanna uh, turn it over to this video about the type of analysis and what we were calling for earlier this year and how that led to, uh, to us putting such resources into the Shama Sawant campaign. Now, not all of this is relevant in pointing just to the Occupy movement as the forces that could run candidates, but I think it's relevant about what vacuum existed uh, in 2012 that led to this. Yeah. 
dark money and corporate muscle. If hundreds of independent, working class candidates had been running, it would have been a different story. And that's why it's absolutely crucial to support the few candidates who are running to challenge the two parties for big business. In Seattle, Occupy activist and socialist alternative candidate Shama Sawan, a teacher, is running for the House of Representatives in Washington State's most progressive district. So unfortunately, there weren't 200 or even 100 other prominent trade unionists like Shama, who's a, who's a union activist uh, in the public sector, that stepped up to, to fight against the two parties of big business. And because of this, you know, the, the election season was dominated, not in the debate the way Occupy defined the debate, the, the debate in 2011 of talking about the inequality in society and talking about corporations having too much power. Although it did seep into the conversation with the hatred at Romney for being a uh, uh, Bain capitalist vulture, with also the discussion about the big money in politics. But that discussion could have been amplified and we would have been able to point towards a concrete alternative that could be a step towards what's really needed in this country, which is a mass working class political party controlled democratically by the activists involved in it, that's connected to social movements, that doesn't take money from big corporations, uh, and that has a program that can challenge the system as a whole. We could have made a massive step in that direction had there been a hundred trade union candidates, a uh, hundred Occupy candidates, etc. in 2012. So we see with Shama's campaign the big opportunities that there are out there to put forward these ideas, but also we see from the fact that this campaign wasn't uh, replicated, replicated is maybe the wrong word, that similar campaigns didn't emerge throughout the country in a hundred different districts. We also see the lack of a working class activist base to step up into this vacuum going forward. So in these big opportunities, there's a danger that then a small socialist group that can make the impact that we have made, that we would substitute ourselves for the lack of activists out there, that we would just try and run all, you know, uh, all few hundred members of Socialist Alternative, all as candidates, and then get bogged down in electoral work, not focus on educating ourselves, not focus on building the movement, etc. But while we don't want to substitute ourselves for a broader movement, sometimes we need to step forward and set an example for the broader movement. Um, and that's exactly what Shama's campaign did. And I think it's interesting as well when we're confronted, uh, either in the trade union movement among young people or just out tabling, when people say, I agree with all your ideas, and yeah, I guess I'm a socialist too, but just don't use that word, and, and, and then you'll be much better off. No green... Um, uh, in a major city, unless you consider Portland, Maine, the major city, got anywhere near the vote that Shama got in this election. The, in 2010, the most prominent independent left-wing political candidate, again, was an open socialist, Dan Um And not only 
was she was Sean was clearly standing on socialist ideas, but she fought to get the word socialist on the ballot. We had to go and have a lawsuit against the Washington state government, which didn't want to let the word socialist onto the ballot. And now that's one of the lucky things, though. That's one of the lucky things that do make Seattle a bit of a unique situation. And we got con consistent media attention, whereas usually you're faced with a media blackout. We got media attention because we could file this lawsuit when they were trying to keep socialists off the ballot. And we got media attention as well because we switched races. Initially, we were forced to run against this liberal Democrat because there was an independent challenger against budget cuts running against uh, Frank Chuck, who we ended up running against. That guy dropped out of the race, the other independent left challenger. We didn't want to, you know, um, we didn't want to have two independent left challengers running in the same race. That guy dropped out. That left the opportunity for us to switch races, and a, week, a widely read weekly newspaper called for us to switch races and called for people to write in in the primaries Shama Swant's name. And that's not an easy name to write in. Uh, it starts with a K, for instance. Um, and 12% of people wrote that in, and that's how we were able to switch races. That kept us in the news as well. And then also something that's, um, that's similar in other areas, but not in everywhere where we organize, is that Seattle's a one-party state. Sound familiar here in Massachusetts? Mm -hmm. Seattle's a one-party state. That means the lesser evil arguments that get thrown against us nonstop in national elections weren't there. Like, there's no lesser evil to Frank Chop. Frank Chop's the corporate evil, and we were the socialist challenger, right? Um, so those types of things are unique about Seattle, or unique about a few places in the country, but the overall situation is not unique. People are angry about budget cuts, angry about attacks on unions, angry about police brutality, which is a huge issue not only in Seattle, but around the country, particularly in the black community. But another thing that was unique about Seattle, which needs to be replicated around the country, it is that there was a small number of individuals educated in socialist ideas, educated in the history of the international movements of the working class, that took it upon themselves, their own responsibility to make an impact in this election, right? And although a small, and it was, yes, a small number of individuals that got these 20,000 votes, and I saw it uh, myself in the last two weeks of this campaign, it shows the impact that individuals can make when organized, when organized around clear ideas. And this is what we can aim to be, is a literal, literal wheel of folks organized around clear ideas that can then turn a bigger wheel of the activists who are willing to move into struggle that can then hopefully, as the Shama Sawant campaign did, make a mass impact among working class people. With 20,000 people voting for a socialist candidate and thousands more who debated it and discussed socialist ideas who probably had never before in their lives discussed socialist ideas in such a uh, concrete way. So if there's any doubt about the impact made, and you can see the impact being in Seattle uh, on a day-to-day -day way, there's this left Democrat uh, who writes for this blog, Random Pottons, Jim Jeps, and sometimes you see his stuff on other left Democrat websites. And in his roundup of the entire election, of course, he was yelling and screaming about how great it is that Obama won and how Elizabeth Warren is quote-unquote on the side of the angels, I guess. That would put the Israeli bombers <laughs> killing Palestinian children on the side of angels as well. But, uh, but in it, it's a short article, and in his overall review of the elections, he spends two paragraphs on Shama's campaign, and that's not incorrect. It's because of the impact that was made, and then the responsibility that falls on our organization going forward to, to, to use this little wheel that we have to make an impact in the broader movement. So Socialist Alternatives National Committee met shortly after this election result, and the National Committee reflected a growing organization with new branches recognized in five different cities. Um, and what we decided to do to test out the mood for whether or not other forces will help step in, help us step into this massive vacuum that exists for independent uh, left-wing politics, is to have a speaking tour, not just. Um, not just organized by Socialist Alternative, but also to try and get other folks on board, folks who are prominent in the Occupy movement, people who have run as independent candidates before, left greens, people from other socialist organizations, Black Agenda Report, for instance, who's very excited about 
uh, Sean Swan's victory uh, in Seattle. To have a speaking tour, to book forward the need for slates of candidates across the country that can be a step towards a mass working class political party. On the basic level of agreement of being independent from the two corporate parties, of, um, of not taking any donations from corporations, and also as well, I think, um, being opposed to, to budget cuts that affect working class people in a negative way. Um, and on this, there's, there's real steps being made towards a slate in Seattle next year that'll challenge the mayor, that'll challenge every city councilor in Seattle. And this tour and hopefully a website and a declaration that we can work with alongside other prominent folks uh, on the left and in the labor movement is to hopefully provide space to, for others to emerge. And that'll only happen through struggle. Um, and I think there is going to be, this is another feature of the new situation we're entering into. There is going to be a tremendous amount of struggle, I think, in 2013. Um, it may not get the attention, say, that Occupy did in 2011, but it'll be around more concrete issues than Occupy was around in 2011. It won't be just abstract ideas, and those are important abstract ideas about naming the enemy of the 1%, of the richest 1% in society. But it'll be around things like defending jobs, like trying to win uh, health care, like trying to win rights for uh, people who are discriminated against every day. And I think that... That the reason for increased struggle is one that the crisis is forcing it upon us, as people in New York saw with uh, with Hurricane Sandy, and people will see around the country with budget cuts, with layoffs, etc. But the other thing is increased confidence among working people as well. We saw the CTU strike of people fighting back and holding off the privatization and union busting agenda. We saw the the widely uh, supported. NFL officials uh, work action that people had um, had you know were supporting a union struggle and also in increased confidence that the right wing was defeated in this election right even though we don't have illusions that Obama is going to provide some great future for working people people rightly see this election the ballot questions etc as a victory for. LGBT people as a victory for people on minimum wage, as a victory for, um, for immigrants, um, as a victory against the right wing offensive. But we have to see as well in this prospect of increased struggle that we want to be connected to increased independent left wing candidates, that there's an opening for us here to take advantage of. But that opening, if the left doesn't take advantage of it, can be an opening for right-wing populist ideas and even hate groups as well. And the threat of that was seen in only a small way of what's actually possible, was seen in Gary Johnson getting, the Libertarian getting, candidate getting, I think, three times as many votes as Jill Stein, the, the most prominent independent left challenger, right? But that's only one part of the threat of right-wing populism. If Ron Paul was the candidate instead of Gary Johnson, uh, he probably would have gotten five, six million votes rather than one million votes, right? And it shows a sense of urgency that the left, that the working class movement needs to have to step into this vacuum to take on the establishment. Um, so I think that's what the initiative of a tour, of a website, is to test the waters about other forces stepping forward. We can't replicate, you know, we can't clone Shama Sawant and make her the perfect candidate everywhere. We can't replicate the situation of switching races, of, um, of a one-party state, although we have that feature here in Massachusetts. We can't replicate the Shama Sawant campaign everywhere, and we need to have a sense of proportion about what the small forces of socialism can actually do. But there is a mood there, and we don't want to just tail this mood. We want to raise consciousness uh, in this mood. The vote for Shama, and I'm wrapping up on this point, it wasn't a consciously socialist vote by all 20,000 people that voted for it. It wasn't like all those 20,000 people read all the works of Marx and Engels and agreed with the first three congresses of the, uh, of the, of the, of the, of the common term after the Russian Revolution. What it reflected was a class vote, right? Class anger, basic class anger. But we didn't just stop at saying, okay, you're against the corporations, vote for us there. We raised consciousness by saying the solution to this crisis is not just to change things a little bit. The solution is to take the main corporations, the corporations who are dodging taxes and causing these budget cuts, 
into the control of working people here and around the world. And in that way, we can deal with the environmental crisis, we can deal with the uh, crisis of jobs that people face. And I want to uh, just give an anecdote to close on about this mood and how Shama and Socialist Alternative in Seattle interacted with it to not just tail consciousness where it was at, but to raise consciousness. On election night, there were massive celebrations where we were having our election party in the Capitol Hill neighborhood in Seattle, right? Massive celebrations because Romney was defeated, massive celebrations uh, because uh, marijuana was legalized and you could smell some direct action <laughs> sealing the victory. Um, massive celebrations, particularly in this community, because historically same-sex marriage was approved not just in Washington, but in four states around the country, which I think was a surprise to many. And these same folks were mesmerized by Obama's speech and were cheering the points for Obama's speech. Um, but then after Obama's speech, there was, there was a street party, uh, and Shama got up on a on a car and started making a speech and everyone was mesmerized by Shama's speech and she said she said uh, the victory on same-sex marriage that wasn't given to you by the Democrats that was that was achieved by activists fighting on the ground to win victories for oppressed people right massive cheer and she said and and I fought to win victories uh, for working people as well against the Democrat uh, Frank Chop, who cuts the budget, and we got a historic vote for a socialist candidate. When she said socialist, these same people who had just been cheering for Obama, chanting USA, 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 although I think slightly mockingly, uh, <laughs> cheered massively every time she said the word socialist. She said the word socialist three different times in the speech, and that shows the opening that's there for anger, uh, although confused anger, at the establishment, and also for raising the banner of socialist ideas and winning people uh, to the need to fight for a better future. So I went about three minutes over time, and I apologize to the chair for that, but I will stop there. <laughs>